What I'm going to show you is how to use ACS, our automatic code synchronizer, with a model. So I'm going to start with a blank model and create the appropriate profiles within it. So I'm going to say new model, and then I pick and choose the different profiles that I want associated with this. If you look here, I have a section called code generation and reversing. It has a lot of different languages to pick. Because I'm using ACS, it's going to select what I need to here. C++ is what I want to generate to. It's also going to give me the, the appropriate profile for ACS. In addition to that, I can include other profiles, such as UML, which will give me more uh, type definitions. And I can include SysML, which will give me the full profile. So I can use the blocks. I can actually generate code from blocks, from ports, from all those different things that exist within uh, SysML. Um, if you look down a little bit farther, there is a section called TDK Code Generators. Don't select anything out of this. That is for uh, when you want to create your own type of model, the code generator itself. You use these as your starting point. It creates a model of a model generator. These create DLLs that you use against what you're going to do there. I'm going to pick where I want to store this. And I'm going to call it something like simple. This is what Studio is. It's built on top of an object-oriented database. So what we're doing when we're creating models and stuff like this with these profiles, it's creating data structures. It's creating the right relationships. It's actually allocating all the space that needs to happen and any kind of uh, cross-pollination uh, that needs to occur. So this takes a little bit of time, but just be patient with it. Now what this do has done is created a blank model with all the appropriate profiles I needed for ACS, C++, the UML system that I've selected, and also I'm going to get a, a Tigo utility profile. And if you look in there, it's got a whole bunch of context menu scripts that are run, depending on what you're doing, end link, start link, stuff like that. The first thing I always do is like to push these profiles so they're not so prevalent in my modeling structure. I, I push them out of way into a, a package called profiles. To start to do that, you need to change the access permissions so they can be moved around. At the model level, there's no protection. It's, it's read-writable. I'm going to copy that protection down to all the children. It makes these also non-protected. I'm then going to create a new package called Profiles. And then I'm going to select all items using the uh, a contents selector down here that allows me to do multi-select, doing control A, I'm deselecting the package I'm going to drag it into, and I drag the entire element and everything I've got there into my profile. I then go and actually change the permissions back so I don't make the uh, mistake of modifying a profile by accident. I protect them all, and I deprotect just the top level. See, these are all protected, they're all moved, and here's my starting point for any model that I've ever created. And this one's simple. So, first thing you do is you create a package. I'm going to call this package one. And in this package one, I'm going to put a diagram, class diagram. Um, one thing to note that uh, Artisan Studio allows you to have a different model generator for every package you have in your system. I can have uh, C++, Java, VB, any language that we have as a generator, anything that you can actually even create as a translator using our TDK technology. You can translate from one thing into another. Um, I'm going to now drop just a basic class onto the model. Another thing to note is in ACS there's an option to tell it to not generate any default names out to the system, to only generate stuff that's been changed. We do that just so that you don't have this constant barrage of me creating new classes and have the ACS sitting there um, generating files. You change the name of the thing, it deletes the file and recreates it under the new name. It's just a way of uh, making it a little cleaner on, on during our generation time. So I'm going to call this class 1, so make sure it's not the default name. In this class, I'm now going to give it a new state machine. And state machines have state diagrams. So if I look here, I have a state machine, has a state diagram. So by default, it gave me this. I'm not going to go through all the different options that you can do on a state diagram. I'm only going to do a real simple uh, use case here. But I always have to have initial condition. And I'm going to go into a couple of what we call atomic states. And if I hold down the control key, I can do one 
and hold up on the control key, and 2, and it deselected on the last one. And make sure you change the names of these two, because this is by default, won't generate uh, correctly in the, until you do. So I'm going to call this state 2, and state 1. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is put transitions between all these things. Hold down my control key. There's one. Still control key down. Two. And let up the control key. And three. I can also hit the escape key on the last, after I've drawn it, to hit to get back my mouse pointer. I'm just going to separate these a little bit out. So I've got a two and a from. This one's going this way. This one's going that way. These slashes are what's called an event action block. Everyone has one on every line transition. You also can put them inside these states. But what I'm going to do for the transition from here to here, I'm going to go to Options. I'm going to select one of these things. Signal is an event, a global event in the system that you can share amongst many state machines. Call is the operation associated with this class. So class 1, if he had an op 1, I can do the call of op 1 here. It'll also make this transition happen. Time is a timed event. Change says if something changed, then do this. Entry, exit, create, and destroy we'll get to when we get into the actual states themselves, the atomic states. But I'm going to make this a signal. I'm going to select one. There's no signals in the system. I did that by selecting there. There's none here. I'm going to create a new one. And it's called event one. And that's just fine. But you will notice that I told it to generate code for package for this class under here. So I will need to take this event and make it so it becomes part of my code generation area. So it'll generate the right set of stuff I need for this. I now am going to add an event action block to my states. I have this one. I'm going to select off of it. It's still the same slashes that you see with everything else. This one doesn't have one. These do. I now can select that slash, and I have the options. I can do the same sets of things we saw before, but I can also do entry, exit, create, and destroy. Create and destroy are more for constructors, destructors, on the initial conditions uh, transition and on, on a, on a uh, final transition. I'm going to do on entry, which means every time I enter the state, run this action. So in the action I'm going to do, I'm going to tell it to C out, standard C++, IO stream, C out. The fact I'm in state 1. I'm going to do the same thing for state 2, and I can do that here. New event action. Select, entry, C out. Now, the only thing I have left to do, if you look at this, it's going to come in here, run this, print a statement, wait for an event, come over here, print this, and immediately come back. I want it to delay a little bit, so I'm going to go on this transition, on this event action block by selecting that slash. I'm going to tell it that I want it to be a timed event, and our numbers are in milliseconds. So if I put 2,000, that means wait 2 seconds, then come back. At this point... I've coded up a set of C++ stuff. I'm using C out, which is necessary or is used by IO stream library. Nothing in the system knows anything about IO stream yet. So I need to actually go back to my class, apply a stereotype, and this additional stereotypes came in because it's inside the profile for the ACS C++ part, um, specifically for libraries and classes. I'm going to make this a C++ class, which gives me this extra tab here to define finer details or, or more uh, uh, control over what is going to come out of this code. Specifically, I've got header includes, implementation includes. For the header, I am going to include C-L-E-D-D, did I spell it right? I-O stream. Now, I've done everything that I need to do to make this a fully functional, running, executable uh, set of code. Now I just need to activate and run ACS so that it will generate this code out to the file system. You'll need to turn on your ACS toolbar by right-clicking in the blue space up in the top of your studio and then selecting ACS TDK control, and you will want to also turn on your state simulation. Both those will be used in what we're going to do here. I'm then I'm going to select the package I want to generate to create a schema or a, a way of generating, the, a way of documenting what I want to put against this. I am then going to load ACS TDK 
And this is a dynamic link library that's actually listening to what's happening in the model, plus it's looking out at the file system to see if anything exists to synchronize the two sets of things. So when I tell it to load, it actually kicks off and it says, okay, I need to actually start activating here. There is no schema associated with it yet, so I will have to create a new one. So I'm going to click Edit. And when this dialog pops up here, I get this. And I have a settings file, which is going to be an SNI file that you can share with other people that they can get your same settings that you've selected. I am now going to say simple four. So I have this simple SNI file that's got nothing associated with it, but it will be as soon as I save it. I then can select a DLL schema that will generate the appropriate translation from this model to a textual file, a code file. These other buttons here are used if you have a TDK model. So if I selected a blank model that was a TDK, it's going to give me all those modeling structures that I need to have that I can modify. I use the 4G button, it will generate a DLL for me to be used in this type of modeling environment. That I would actually pick a DLL that I generated from there. Our stuff exists inside App Data Roaming ITS Shadow Scripter. Then we have languages for Ada. C, Sharp, C, C++, IDL, Java, Pyke, VB, VxWorks. Um, and in, within every one of these languages, you have multiple generators to pick from. I can be active Win32, which is multi-threaded. I can just be Win32 animation or production. The difference between animation and production is animation puts extra calls through the Windows port from your code that's running back to studio to allow it to animate, to show what's going on. It allows to pause, step, move through stuff like that. Um, you can also be POSIX, VxWorks, and the, and the idea is that I can animate it and then I can also go to production. So if you like VxWorks, if you have an embedded system and it has a TCP IP connectivity, it can, Studio can listen to what's happening there by sending the information back over to Studio and it can log that data and then actually generate a sequence diagram based on whatever happened during that uh, execution path. I'm gonna pick Win32 animation. Pick the schema. In that schema, it tells it that here's the DL name and here's the location where it's at. I now am going to pick a target directory. And you can use ampersand M that is the name of the model. So it's actually picking the name of the model to generate uh, in, the, in that directory. Also, by me picking the animation, this extra tab shows up that wasn't here before. This tab is just telling us where is my starting point that I need to say for the main that's going to get generated? He's going to create an instance of something and then run the initial condition state behavior stuff within that. So if this class, he would contain parts and, and parts of parts, more of a composite structure. So this would be the main uh, holding spot that I need to actually say that I'm going to build from. But I only have one class, and so I'm saying select this class, save and launch. What you're seeing down here is the actual behavior, what's happening within uh, the ACS TDK uh, generator. That I'm loading up the DLL, this is, and it's telling me what's, what's the date of the thing that was built. It's making sure everything's uh, cached between what's the model and out here on the directory. It's taking a look. It created this directory here called simple. You can see it's empty. If we give it just a few seconds. It will populate this with a few files, and I'll describe what those are when it finishes here. And what it did, it copied some initial files from our Artigo installation area out here. These are dummy project files that have all the right include files, DLLs, the right things that you need to have it to be animated between what you're doing here and what Studio has. Um, it has all the appropriate uh, behavior uh, as it needs to. These are blank sets of files that just exist inside the Atigo area. They can be modified so that every time a new project set up, it'll copy from those modified files into here. VC9s for two, uh, Visual Studio 2008. This is for two Visual Studio 2010, and this is for 2013. I have I have 2008 on my machine, and it has a couple uh, files that are just used as a standard stuff. I can also see over here, this is the first generation, first generation results are not written to disk. We do that on purpose because we're just making sure we have everything set up and the user knows what's going on. And we're just going to make it so that you force generate the first time you want to do this because this could be a lengthy process depending on how big your model is. 
I force generated, if I load up what's happening here, I now have these additional CPP and header files that would show up, which was my class one header and CPP. These files are used because it's uh, I'm using the um, uh, animation capabilities of the state behavior, so I'm telling the state how to run, and there are, we have code inside of here and how that's how that's done. And this is inside the generator itself and how these files are formed. We do give you those those models that are inside here are have all this stuff populated in it on how this is all generated. I clicked on the VC project and it loads up this the blank set of things. There's no files associated with it yet, but it is everything that I had when I copied it over. Now I need to add my existing items into this. So I'm going to add the existing item, select all the CPP and headers, and even though these are in here already, I'm just going to go ahead and add them. It adds them into the appropriate area they need to be. Here's class one, the class one header, but if I go and look through this, you can see I have stuff that looks like RTS, notify, enter, exit, transition, with some GUI IDs. What this is doing is this RTS notify is the set of code that sends the information, if I hover over that you can even see, sends the information over the Windows port from here into Studio. So this is telling Studio where is, where is the execution at at any given time so we know what to animate and where to be. We're also capturing this information and uh, using that um, to create a sequence diagram in the future if we need to. But you can see here, here's my C out statement for state one and L, the same thing here is here. I've got this protected region that I can write into. So if I write something in here, as soon as I save it, ACS is listening and it knows to reverse engineer whatever I type back into here. So actually it reverse engineered my code that I typed out here directly into my state behavior. I could take this back out. I guess I didn't say it a second there. Now I can take this and I can build this project. So I'm going to say build to let this push through. I get 18 warnings. They're not really that important to what we're doing here. I have no errors. That's really the, the thing that we did look at. So now that did build. Now between these two systems, I'm going to tell a, uh, um, Studio to start to listen to the port. So I'm going to, what we say, run the state machine, it's really just start to listen. I come back over here and I tell this, this execution to go ahead and run. So it runs this win app exe because that's what we told it the name is. And now it's also communicating through the Windows port back to Studio and Studio starts to animate. As you can see here, I've taken the initial condition. The blue stuff says I've already been there. The black says I, stuff is not, I have not been there yet. The red is where I am at. So I ran this, I got my initial condition in state one. And you can see that if I look at my output statement, state one. I then now can go through and inject events into the system. So I can do this. I'll just push this out of the way so you can see. I have an event one, oops, event one. And I can inject this. If I have any variables in my system, I can actually set them, get them, I can change values at any given time. So I'm going to inject this. And you can see what it is. It caused the event one, waited two seconds, came back around. I come back out here to my output, I did state two, and I'm back to state one. And it was just that delay in time, and that's all I've done, is I'm showing that I can animate and I can cause events to happen in the system. This is ACS um, to what it is to now. Um, I will, I'll show you uh, other videos will be um, OCS, which is our reverse engineering, how to create those models from this set of stuff, and um, I can even get into TDK if we wanted to look into that. Thank you.